CPU air coolers come in many shapes and sizes, but the most popular are single tower 120mm coolers for their universal memory compatibility and cooling performance. So welcome back to Budget vs Beast, the series where we take both a premium and a budget focus option within a product category to compare them against one another and ask the question, is it worth spending the extra money? In this video, we are of course looking at slim 120mm tower coolers, so which ones do we have facing off against one another today? Well, we have the widely loved and budget focused option, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition, coming in at only $40. This is the premium Noctua NHU12S Chromax Black Edition, coming in at about double that, closer to $80, which is quite a big price disparity between them. So, which one of these popular coolers is better for you? Which one should you go for? To help us answer those questions, we're going to be reviewing them against one another in the following categories. The looks and design, the ease of install and compatibility, and then most importantly, a comprehensive performance performance tests, including noise performance, and stay tuned to the end because I'm going to wrap up this video by scoring both of them in each of the categories and answer the question, which one deserves your money? And who should you listen to? Your wallet or your heart? So sit back, relax, and enjoy Budget vs Beast right after a message from today's video sponsor. WhoKeys is a one-stop place for cheap games and software, allowing you to buy games and software keys significantly cheaper than the full price retail version. To try out the service, I personally bought a Windows 10 Pro license for under $14 using the TechLens coupon code TL20. Not only was the process incredibly simple, but I got one of my Windows machines fully activated for over 90% less than the full price retail version. This allows you to not only get rid of that annoying watermark, especially for you streamers, but also do other things you might not really Realize, like unlock the ability to customize your Windows theme, change the name of your PC, and really make your computer your computer. So check out WhoKeys today using the link in the video description, and don't forget to apply your 20% off coupon using the code TR20. So quickly going over what comes with the two coolers, you get the tower itself with the fan already pre-mounted, and the accessories box with instruction manuals. Inside the accessories box, both of them include mounting hardware for AMD and Intel, and we'll go over which socket types in a bit, but they also include a tube of thermal paste and additional anti-vibration pads and mounting clips in case you want to add another fan to the cooler, which is great to see. The Hyper 212 comes with a PWM splitter, and where the notch would differs is that it also includes one of their awesome low noise adapters, a case emblem, and a long screwdriver for its mounting solution. So moving on to the looks and design category, the NHU12S comes in a completely stealth matte black finish covering the entire cooler. Literally everything is black, other than the nickel plated cold plate. Coupled with Notchua's black NFF12 fan, looking down onto the cooler, how it will appear in most builds, you see nothing but a minimalist extruding Notchua logo your five heat pipes and your fan's serial number. So as we fix this stupid oversight, rotate the fan 90 degrees and request whoever made that decision be shot in the face, we can then appreciate the uninterrupted stealth and sharp angled design of the fin stack. It just gives it a really edgy look overall. And if you wanted a different look tomorrow, you can always buy Chromax heat sink covers and anti-vibration pads, which are really cool accessory ideas. So moving on to the Hyper 212 Black Edition, the first thing that you'll notice is that it isn't black. In fact, the only thing that is black about it is the Silencio fan. The top of the cooler is more of a grey brush metal look and the rest of the tower is more similar to a black chrome, again looking dark grey. I wouldn't be too worried though as it will still suit most builds but it is worth noting. Otherwise, the one thing that I do really appreciate about the looks of the Hyper 212 is the caps covering the four heat pipes on top of the cooler. That's just a really nice touch. But the big bold Cooler Master logo on top just looks cartoony really and it's either going to work for you or it's not. So moving down to the bottom of the two coolers highlights some interesting design differences that may have a big impact on performance. Although the Hyper 212 has one less heat pipe, they do have direct contact to the CPU with a separate fin stack on top. And additionally, the Hyper 212 does have greater surface area per individual fin, which in theory is all a cooling benefit. So we'll have to see in the performance category if more fins and heat pipes is better than direct contact, bigger fins, as well as an additional heatsink. So let's get both of these installed while we cover the installation and compatibility category. Both coolers are compatible with all modern sockets and when it comes to sizing they continue to be very similar. Both allow for full RAM compatibility for even the tallest RGB memory but the Hyper 212 is ever so slightly bigger overall. And then the similarities even cascade into their respective mounting solutions with some minor differences. The Hyper 212 does require you to use their included backplate for both mainstream Intel and AMD boards which means that there are a few more steps involved for AMD users compared to the NHU12S. But one of the biggest things that I appreciate about Notchua's mounting system is that it's only two screws to remove the cooler, which is really convenient. 
Otherwise, the instruction manuals were incredibly clear for both, making them a breeze to install, with the NHU-12S gaining the edge over the Hyper-212. So now, the most important part and what you should probably care most about, the performance numbers. So we're going to test both of these coolers with a bit more depth than you typically see to determine a winner, going over temps using their included thermal paste and then separately with the same thermal interface to follow up with noise levels and sound profile before we wrap up this video, score both of the coolers and answer the question, which one deserves your money? At 50, 75 and 100% fan speed, the NHU-12S puts up some really respectable numbers with the 6-core Ryzen 3600 while using both the included NHT1 thermal paste and then separately with the IC graphite pad. And comparing this to the Hyper-212, we actually see some really interesting results. Cooler Master mostly comes out on top compared to Notua, especially when they're both using the same thermal interface material. But there's something important I need to tell you that does change this data quite considerably. This graph only tells us raw performance and that outright ignores all other factors. So let's introduce some more data and over fan speed on top of our graph. See, this is a clear example of brute force cooling. Making the fan spin quicker, you'll obviously make air move faster. So let's take a look at the fan speed results of 17 100% NHU-12S versus 50 and 75% Hyper-212, as comparing these puts the RPM fortunately quite close to one another. The NHU-12S comes out on top across the board when comparing the closest fan rotation speed results, and this highlights the thing that we all know to be true. Not sure fans are industry leaders, and this does allow the CPU to remain cooler all while working significantly less hard compared to the Silencio fan. So the last thing that I want to test is noise level before we score both of the callers and answer the question, which one should you go for? So I'm a big fan of making systems as quiet as possible. And the results of this category surprised me quite a bit. Let me show you. Even though the Hyper-212 is spinning significantly faster, it's actually quieter at the same fan speed percentage. Let's take a listen. Although I prefer the sound profile of the NHU-12S, I honestly thought that it would just win this category absolutely hands down. But I guess this does make some sense. The fin density of the NHU-12S is quite a bit higher than the Hyper-212, which will have an impact on noise performance, forcing air through more and tighter spaces. So let's rate both of these coolers in the categories that we covered and wrap up Budget versus Beast Episode 3. For the looks and design category, I'm giving the NHU-12S a 4.5 out of 5 and the Hyper-212 a 3, primarily due to Noctua's stealth matte black and chromax accessories, though I would like to see some included with the cooler. But the Hyper-212 black edition not being black is almost comical, and the logo just looks a bit silly, but otherwise it is an attractive cooler overall. As for compatibility and installation, they both support all the major sockets you'll want them for, and the installation was simple for both. But Noctua's mounting solution was more convenient with less steps involved, giving it a and the Hyper-212 a 4. And lastly, cooling and noise performance. I'm surprisingly giving both of these a 4 out of 5 in this category, with the included thermal paste for each. The Notchua does beat out the Hyper-212 at the top end, all while doing it at a significantly lower fan speed and a better sound profile. But the Silencio fan is very quiet, even at high speed. And the fact that I'm even comparing these so closely is just a testament to the Silencio. So ultimately, which one should you go for? Honestly, the cooling performance between them is borderline negligible, and you're likely going to be only mounting this cooler once. So it comes down to looks, which is absolutely subjective. But personally, I think the NHU-12S does look much better, and I love the Chromax accessories idea. But whether that's worth $40, only you can answer that. So check out updated pricing of both of these coolers in the video description, and if you want to watch more Budget vs Beast episodes, I'm going to leave them right there for you. Otherwise, like, get subscribed, and turn on notifications for upcoming videos, and I will see you in the next one.